Um, okay, where do we start? Um, we start with, he is probably back today. Um, that's what, what, I, what I've heard. We're obviously in close contact with him all over the time. Um, and how it always is in these cases, um, in the moment when you have a negative, te negative test, then it's um, the, the process really starts. He's a good place. He feels well. Um, no symptoms. And um, so that's all fine. The other thing, there's absolutely nothing to say in public about, to be honest. Um, all the things um, I have to talk uh, to, to talk to my players about, it's nothing for the public. But what I can tell you, I was in the summer in Germany. A friend of mine had uh, uh, moved his birthday party only because of me, because he knew I'm in Germany. 50 people attended there. I decided in the last minute not to go. So... Um, and that was only a birthday party because I, and it was allowed in Germany. It was allowed in Germany in that time. It was outside, all that stuff, but I didn't go. Um, so that's only one situation. In other, in other countries, in other situations, there's more, there's more social, I'm not sure if it's the right word, but kind of pressure on you and stuff like this. And a brother's wedding is a very special moment. What I can say about my players, um, they are incredibly disciplined, all. I have to say, when I speak about all football players, football players in general were very incredibly disciplined. There were some cases, of course, but they really know about uh, the situation. But sometimes um, uh, it doesn't work out like this and something happens and now um, we are in the situation we are in. But all the rest is just between Mo and me. And we did that already, so we are fine. On top of that, of course, you've sustained further injuries during the course of the international break. So I don't know whether you want to go through them uh, one by one. Um, obviously, big disappointment with, with Joe Gomez being injured. Um, first of all, how is he? How is he recovering? Oh, again, tough one. Um, but he, the surgery was successful. And um, so he's now already um, um, recovering first from the surgery and then from um, uh, starting the, the rehabilitation. Um, but um, he's with his family, so he's in, a, he's in a, the best possible place, I would say. And um, yeah, that's it pretty much. So rehab started now. That, that's how it is when after surgery you count from that moment on backwards um, and we help as much as we can. But for the first few days, um, all of the boys after surgery, you, you probably feel pretty alone. That's how it is. But when you have your family around and that's in his case to case, then it's all all, all good um, or as good as possible. That's it. And the others to go through, obviously, Jordan Henderson, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Fabinho, Thiago, Reese Williams. Will they be available this weekend? We will see. Oh, Hendo not, Trent not, that's clear. Um, and all the rest we will see. So... Um, but uh, who, who, who are the others? <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, yeah, Jordan, uh, Trent, Fabinho and Thiago. Where are they at? Yeah, in a good way. Um, Ox in a good way. So they're all um, closer. Um, but we will see if it's close enough for the weekend. And finally for me, Jürgen, I just wonder, how much of a threat do you see Leicester in the season's title race? Brendan has had injuries to deal with himself as well, yet there they are top of the league flying at the moment. Yeah, of course they are in. Um, it's a eighth match day, and uh, Leicester showed no, not only last year how how good they can be, and uh, this year again um, changed their style slightly. Um, had to maybe because of the the injuries they had. Um, deal really well with it. Good example of how you can deal with a with an injury um, um, crisis, whatever. Um, really did really well. Are in a good moment. Have a clear idea how they want to play. Um, and that's a, a tough one. And so, of course, they are contenders for everything that they were last year for a long, long period. And this year they are more experienced in the situation. So, yeah, of course. Fantastic. Okay, Mandy from Premier League Productions. Mandy. Hello, Jürgen. Hi. Hi. Um, Jamie Vardy, of course, is a, a great record against the top teams, as I'm sure you know. Uh, what do you think it is about him that makes him so difficult to stop? His speed, <laughs> first and foremost, um, that's probably is incredible. And how he uses that, how smart he is, how um, how he developed his game over the years. He's a massive threat for everybody. Yeah? He, he really 
gambles in a good way with the with the last line um, is taking the risk in these situations. But his um, yeah, his technical level is really good as well. So not only the finishing, but all the rest, first touch, all these kind of things. Jamie's a proper proper player, I have to say. And um, so yeah, it's always a challenge to defend him. And the only way I know to defend him is to make sure that he gets not a pass he wants. So that means we have to defend all the others as well. And just a, another one, we're doing a feature on leadership, so asking quite a lot of managers about that. In your opinion, what's the most important trait when it comes to leadership and management? Listening. To your players, to yourself, or? To everybody and everything, because you only can make decisions if you know as much as possible about the situation. That means first and foremost, listening. Nobody is in a, uh, I, I don't know any person who can make decisions just without knowing anything about it. Unfortunately, in the world, we have a lot of people who are doing that constantly, that they're completely clueless, but still making decisions, especially politicians. But that's the world out there. Um, I don't understand it like this. Okay, fantastic. We'll go to James from TalkSport and then Ian Kennedy from BBC Merseyside and then Carl Markham from uh, Press Association. Yes, James. Hi, Egan. Yeah, Hello. obviously it was a, a really bitter blow to swallow with Joe Gomez suffering that injury on international duty. Just how pleased are you that you've now got the players until March? They're not going anywhere and you can keep them under, under control at Liverpool. Yeah, of course, I'm happy about that, but that's um, not really, I, I don't... <laughs> Look, the situation is really difficult for all of us. It was difficult for the FAs and for, for the UEFA, and um, they had to cancel a, a European Championship in the summer. So now we all ask them to, to just uh, don't play international football anymore. But, you know, uh, they have the same problem like the, the leagues, the national leagues have. So um, I'm not blaming anybody, any coach or whatever, for, for these kind of injuries. It's the situation we are in. Um, and so that doesn't change. Uh, we have now the, the most intense period without international football is coming up now, from now until February probably. We play pretty much every three days. Um, that's exactly, it's better you have them around because then you can judge exactly what they do and stuff like this. And we do things they are used to and all these kind of things. We go to a national team, they're always other fitness coaches. They didn't work from maybe for the last four, six weeks and then they're really um, in it. Um, that's possible, but um, that's the situation. No, no, the, the most intense period is coming up now. So I'm I'm happy that they are back and I'm happy that most of them, still most of them came back healthy and how fit we will see. Um, but um, that doesn't change the general situation. Okay, Ian Kennedy, BBC Radio Merseyside. Hi, Jürgen. Um, just just given the, the injuries and selection issues that we've been talking about, does this underline how important it is to have a way of playing at a club that runs throughout all the different levels and all the age groups of the club. So when players, particularly young players, are needing to come through, that they already know the system and how, how you want them to play. Very important, very important. But there's still, of course, some distance. So it's like between the U23s, for example, and, 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 and us, and then the first team playing, there, there's still, um, you cannot play exactly like we do. Um, in the U23s for, for different reasons, um, what do the opponents do? But a lot of things um, should be very, very similar, if not exactly the same. Um, and so, yes, it's very important. And in our case, it's it, in our situation, it is the case um, that the, the boys know before they arrive in our training uh, what we want them to do. But then they're still uh, a little distance. But um, the boys who came up so far were absolutely incredible. I did really incredible. Um, of course, we all know that Nate played a super game, Reese played a super game, um, Curtis is maybe the main example, but there are other boys in the training at the moment, they all look really, really good. Um, Longstaff, Glatzel, um, Leighton Clarkson, Clark, um, Jay Kane, they look sensationally well. And Billy is, is back as well, um, after all the little and big issues he had, is back as well in training. So uh, we, are, we are blessed with a lot of talent around us and some were not in training but are already um, maybe on, on their way, uh, which I don't know in the moment. And um, so, yes, the door is open. In our situation especially, the door is open, but the door is always open and um, yeah, it helps when you have the same idea of football. Thank you, Ian. And then we'll go to Carl Markham and then we'll finish with on the open part of the press conference with Per from TV2 Norway. Carl first. Hey, Jürgen. Hi, Carl. Hi. 
Uh, I know you've mentioned before that we're, we're in a, a unique situation with with this season now playing, but have you ever have you ever had to deal with a with an injury situation like the one you've got at the moment? And and how do you approach sort of planning for three games a week when it's like this? Taking it game by by taking it game by game doesn't work in a different way because um, if you think about the next game before you play the game in front of you, then you have no chance in that game. That makes no sense. Then you have completely different problems a few days later. So it's just game by game that will never change. Um, and no, not with exactly the same injury situation, of course not, but um, similar. And there's no season when you have no problem with injuries. It's always the same. But in our situation, it's slightly different that um, uh, a lot of players on the same position get injured uh, and seriously injured. Um, and that makes it, of course, tricky. But um, nobody here feeds not at all any kind of self pitiness or whatever, I'm not sure it's the right word, but, but we, we don't feel sorry for ourselves. It's, it's a situation. Um, in a moment when you get the information, then it's a moment where it hits you really. But a minute later, you are already in the in the solution process. And um, and that's exactly where the, we are very long in that already. And so now we have players available. And I always said, as long as we can feed 11 players, we will fight for the three points. And um, we can, we will line up three players. Um, on that, I can promise that at least for Sunday, and then we will fight with all we have. You, you say you, you don't feel self pity, and you never would do. But can you use the? Can you use it in a, a motiv- motivational way for the players who are fit in terms of this situation we've got? We need to, you know, pull together. Yeah, of course, <laughs> but it's not here. So I have a, about that. What we, but we are. How I said, we are a unit, a proper proper unit. And the more problems we have, the closer we stick together. So that was always like this, will always be like this um, in this club. And um, so, yes, we will not. How I said, we don't go for excuses. We, we we have the situation we have. We don't like the injuries we have because it's really hard for the boys who have the injury. But um, all the rest is uh, working on solutions. That's what we always do. And we have solutions in our mind. And um, maybe we think we are, that's the worst situation possible. But um, the season is long and we have only played eight games. So there will become a lot of problems. And I always said, who deals the best with the problems they in front of them will has a chance to be really successful. And um, that's what we try to be. Fantastic. And just before we go to you, Pat, because a couple of guys who are going to be in the first embargo, which we'll go to after this question, start using the hands-on mechanism now, which is the, uh, the daily papers, please, or the daily publications. But, Pay, your question to finish the open part of this press conference. Yeah. Hi, again. Hi, Pat. Uh, you're probably sick about talking about injuries now, but, but obviously <laughs> it's a part of the game, even if it's never fun. But do you think this could make Liverpool stronger in 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 a kind of strange way, like this giving your players something extra to prove and fight for now? I don't think my my players have to prove anything. To like um, we always deal with the difficult situation really well. But yes, it's how I said. I, I don't obviously nobody's happy with my answers. That's why you ask constantly the same questions. So yes, we um, um, we will fight with all we have, and that means if the problems become bigger, you get closer uh, to each other, and then you you still fight. If somebody thinks we will give up before the game just because um, some of our really really best of our best players or very very important players are not available um, in the moment and for a, for a long long time, yeah, I cannot help him. But we will not do that. We just have to use. Accept the situation and use the situation. That's how it always is in life, and that's how it is in our situation also. Yeah? 